This is another sign of the times, an analysis, and a commentary. Donald Trump is unfit to be president. Donald J. Trump is imploring supporters to rally behind him by portraying himself as a victim of false smears from a growing number of women accusing him of making unwanted advances, a brazen attempt to stabilize his campaign amid a new round of criticism from Republican allies and a searing denunciation by Michelle Obama. At least six women have publicly accused Mr. Trump of groping and forcibly kissing them over the decades, a pattern of sexual assault that he denied in the presidential debate after bragging about such behavior in a 2005 recording that was unearthed. Mr. Trump denied all the allegations and even lashed out at one of the women, a former writer for People magazine, seemingly implying that she was not attractive enough for him. Look at her, look at her words, Mr. Trump said at a rally. I don't think so. The allegations about Mr. Trump's treatment of women became the all-consuming focus of the political world. A remarkable turn as the sexual history of a presidential nominee became a dominant and unavoidable issue. Rarely, too, has a candidate in a general election so darkly insinuated that a conspiracy of forces was trying to undermine him and his admirers as Mr. Trump did at events in the battleground states of Florida and Ohio. A beleaguered Donald Trump is seeking to undermine the legitimacy of the U.S. presidential election. Pressing unsubstantiated claims, the contest is rigged against him. Vowing to jail Hillary Clinton if he's elected and throwing in a baseless insinuation his rival was on drugs in the last debate. Not even the country's more than two centuries of peaceful transitions of political leadership were sacrosanct as Trump accused the media and the Clinton campaign of conspiring against him to undermine a free and fair election. House Speaker Paul Ryan, whose decision not to campaign for Trump angered the GOP nominee, made clear he does not share the candidate's concern about the election's legitimacy. Our democracy relies on confidence in election results, and the Speaker is fully confident the states will carry out this election with integrity. It was not the first time Trump has raised the idea the election is unfairly tilted against him, but it has become a resurgent theme for the New York billionaire and many of his supporters in the past several days as he slipped in preference polls and faced allegations of sexual misconduct. There was trouble in Ohio, too, where Trump severed ties with the state's Republican Party chairman, who had become openly critical of the nominee at times. That crack in unity comes in a critical battleground state where the Republican governor is also not behind Trump. Trump and the Nuclear Keys Mr. Trump is seemingly blind to the importance of restraint in nuclear decision-making. He shows no humility toward the civilization-ending destructiveness of nuclear weapons and off-handedly entertains their use. He has suggested that South Korea and Japan should consider developing their own arsenals. Empowering such a person to single-handedly initiate a nuclear strike would put the nation and the world as we know it in real jeopardy. The system of nuclear command and control places extreme pressure on hundreds of operators and excruciating demands on one person, the president. In the midst of crisis, this system might generate highly uncertain information and confusion and even fail with catastrophic 
effects, all of which call for a calm and rational respect for the war-making machinery and the utmost caution in deciding whether to employ nuclear forces. And Donald Trump does not have this kind of respect or the fortitude and patience to make such decisions. So again, Donald J. Trump is unfit to be President of the United States of America because there are way too many negatives against him. Second Peter Chapter 2 False prophets appeared in the past among the people, and in the same way false teachers will appear among you. They will bring in destructive, untrue doctrines, and will deny the Master who redeemed them. And so they will bring upon themselves sudden destruction. Two, even so, many will follow their immoral ways. And because of what they do, others will speak evil of the way of truth. Three, in their greed, these false teachers will make a profit out of telling you made-up stories. For a long time now, their judge has been ready, and their destroyer has been wide awake. 4. God did not spare the angels who sinned, but threw them into hell, where they are kept chained in darkness, waiting for the day of judgment. 5. God did not spare the ancient world, but brought the flood on the world of godless people, the only ones he saved were Noah, who preached righteousness, and seven other people. 6. God condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, destroying them with fire, and made them an example of what will happen to the godless. 7. He rescued Lot, a good man, who was distressed by the immoral conduct of lawless people. 8. That good man lived among them, and day after day he suffered agony as he saw and heard their evil actions. 9. And so the Lord knows how to rescue godly people from their trials, and how to keep the wicked under punishment for the day of judgment. 10. Especially those who follow their filthy bodily lusts and despise God's authority. These false teachers are bold and arrogant and show no respect for the glorious beings above. Instead, they insult them. 11. Even the angels, who are so much stronger and mightier than these false teachers, do not accuse them with insults in the presence of the Lord. 12. But these people act by instinct, like wild animals born to be captured and killed. They attack with insults, anything they do not understand. They will be destroyed, like wild animals. 13. And they will be paid with suffering, for the suffering they have caused. Pleasure for them is to do anything in broad daylight that will satisfy their bodily appetites. They are a shame and a disgrace as they join you in your meals, all the while enjoying their deceitful ways. 14. They want to look for nothing but the chance to commit adultery. Their appetite for sin is never satisfied. They lead weak people into a trap. Their hearts are trained to be greedy. They are under God's curse. 15. They have left the straight path and have lost their way. They have followed the path taken by Balaam, son of Beor, who loved the money he would get for doing wrong. 16. And was rebuked for his sin. His donkey spoke with a human voice and stopped the prophet's insane action. 17. These people are like dried up springs, like clouds blown along by a storm. God has reserved a place for them in the deepest darkness. 18. They make proud and stupid statements and use immoral bodily lusts to trap those 
who are just beginning to escape from among people who live in error. 19. They promise them freedom while they themselves are slaves of destructive habits. For we are slaves of anything that has conquered us. 20. That people have escaped from the corrupting forces of the world through their knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and then are again caught and conquered by them. Such people are in worse condition at the end than they were at the beginning. 21. It would have been much better for them never to have known the way of righteousness than to know it and then turn away from the sacred command that was given them. 22. What happened to them shows that the Proverbs are true. A dog goes back to what it has vomited, and a pig that has been washed goes back to roll in the mud. Yes, it's time for prophecy to be fulfilled. And all these are more signs.